techno commercial is a very important function because ultimately it is an important tool to control the cost at one hand and also to make the system the supply chain management very effective and integrated with the internal processes of the organization and one has to strike synergy to have the best kind of efficiency and effectiveness so it's a good function knowledge of technology is required knowledge of commercial is also required knowledge of management is also required so mba is definitely an advantage but knowledge of technology goes if it is a technical technology function company you have to know of course if you are buying what you are buying is technology product one has to be tech savvy as well and nowadays of course uh, lot of things are happening uh, like uh, connectivity through internet ebidding etc with this uh, advent of blockchain into the dealings etc things are becoming exciting and interesting and i'm sure it will make a, people can make a very good career in this line very rewarding career and uh, it makes a lot of difference to the company of course usually why do uh, any procurement agencies face suspicion and scrutiny for possible for possible unethical practices yeah generally uh, these people who handle these functions are seen to be very busy with mobile most of the time they are seen getting work done through phone call dramatically uh, they can make a difference to the situation by just making one phone call so they are influential they are powerful they have clout they can make things happen they can make a change to the situation very fast so and for any big companies big oems there are many many vendors who want to enroll who want to make an entry as a supplier into the aim into the organization so these people are sought after so usually you find these people always busy on mobile they don't have any time to themselves all 24 hours you can see them carrying mobile and they are talking to somebody or the other they are sought after people many people try to contact them many people try to talk to them all the time and they are seen doing sometimes uh, things which could be termed as willing dealing making some understanding with people now whether or not it is unethical is uh, doubtful but then people start suspecting that how this fellow is for because any superlative performer if he is going out of the way and able to do some drastic thing people start by default suspecting something uh, foul play that there must be something on okay there must be some money involved like maybe making money through the deal or why he is taking so much interest for example why people are following up so much to with him and only with a particular person in the group okay so the person naturally gets an image of uh, probably being uh, a propounder of uh, unethical practices in this one so people start doubting now these doubts may be sometimes true but often may not be true also but that is because of the job profile which they have that is because of the image which these people carry okay so okay. people who can talk out to people and get things done on phone or on urgent basis on super urgent basis they can make people to respond so people start getting some suspicion that uh, there must be something behind this why is this function preferred by many aspirants no many times uh, people when they join an organization they have aspiration to do mba and vendor management and uh, supply chain management is a good area to grow into after doing mba and many times some youngsters want to become entrepreneur so they want to know how to 
deal with big organizations, how big organization selects their suppliers so that later they can themselves become supplier. So they want to gain some experience from this side of the table so that they can switch over to the other side of the table later. So that is one of the reason, one of the motivating factor why people want to go in this function. Another thing is of course as alleged if there is some under table money to be made or not is question mark but then if there is a grain of truth in what is being alleged probably that could also be I will not say motivating factor but then yes for some people it may be something which they may gravitate towards it. Why is it so difficult to perform and do and transform this area of work? Because these functions are being suspected, the organizations have a very elaborate set of rules and regulations and procedures to be followed for due diligence. Okay. So, on one side you have let us say SAP, you have big elaborate ERP with a big checklist with a due diligence list which you have to ram through like a clerk. For setting any deal you have to go through all those conditions. So, there are so many formalities, there are so many procedures to be followed. So, one image of the person doing this job is the image of a clerk who is sifting through all those rules and regulations and doing tick mark, ye ho gaya, ye ho gaya, ye nahi hua, like that. Okay. Now, that person will give an impression that he is doing a clerical work and he is sluggish, he cannot respond fast because he has to follow the complete checklist, he has to follow the complete elephant list what he says to ram through. Right. On the other side, you have a laid back person who is making things happen urgently on phone call <coughs> overnight, probably bypassing all the rules, regulation systems. you see both the profiles. So, somebody is branded as a Babu, somebody is branded as corrupt. Now, it is for individual to decide you want to be a Babu or you want to be corrupt because it is very difficult to sit on fence. You have to go this way or that way. And organization also, while on one side, they slap a big elephant list of to do things due diligence points, procedures, audit points. On the other hand, there are crises where you are supposed to respond overnight on phone call for firefighting situation. So, how can one do both the contradictory things is a problem. is a problem. Is negotiation skill a must for these functions? Negotiation skill goes with uh, some of these functions in the sense that yes, before any deal has to be finalized, you have to negotiate. Probably there are multiple rounds of negotiations and there are techniques of negotiation. Negotiation skill is there. It is required, but uh, it is quite different from the negotiation skill which is seen at the roadside stalls. When ladies are buying something, how they negotiate, a shopkeeper says some price, they say slash it by 50 percent or even sometimes a one third and offer that and they start from there and then they arrive somewhere midway. Now, that is not the kind of negotiation skill which is usually required. Nowadays, good organizations have uh, for everything. Uh, concept called as should costing. So, any product based on what material goes into it, what process goes on to it, you are fairly accurately able to determine what it should, what should be its should cost. Okay. Now, if you know the should cost, the supplier is not expected to come below the should cost. If he is coming below the should cost, then he is doing something wrong probably he is not giving something as it should be. Probably he is diluting some requirement, 
some accuracy requirement or some material requirement or something, some feature requirement, right. So, should cost is used as a guideline nowadays to decide what price you can ask and you have to keep a reasonable margin for the supplier also because you want him to sustain, you do not want to kill the supplier okay, in the long run because ultimately nowadays uh, there is a concept of supplier partner. So, you want to treat that person as your partner, as your extension. So, you want in your company's interest that this person should survive, you should still be there in the market serving you in the same way. Right? So, today if you haggle too much, beat him down, uh, tomorrow he may become bankrupt, he may quit the business. Right? Now, that is not the scenario which good organizations look for. Right? So, negotiation skills are required, but they have transformed a lot over what they used to be and how they were taught at one time, okay. That you blindly just slash it by 50 percent, whatever he quotes, assume that he would have some margin, you just go on beating him. You know, he may agree, but he will give you something substandard and next time he may not quote to you also. So, these things do not give lasting result, they give only very short term benefit for individual deal one time, okay. So, should costing is replacing this uh, negotiation, but yes for negotiations other kind of thing, contracts negotiation, there the negotiation is still there for big contracts or with capital equipment, okay. In capital equipment in buying a big machine or a big equipment, automation equipment, or a big package of things, probably yes there will be negotiation. So, then there are techniques of negotiation that uh, nowadays people do e-bidding where it is quite transparent process, anybody can bid from anywhere in the world and everybody can see how much anybody has bid. So, it is very transparent process. Before that there used to be a sealed envelope method at certain date everybody is supposed to give a sealed quote and then you open the and go to the L1, the order goes to L1 only. Nowadays that notion has also gone that L1 is the best, okay. L1 may not be the best, L1 may be L1 just to scuttle your project, it may not supply in time. So, all those cautions are there and then there were rounds and rounds of uh, negotiation. Initially you give an estimate, there are different agencies who negotiate every time the party is supposed to come down by some amount. So, we used to advise such parties not to throw the towel up front as you would have enough opportunity to do that later. Yeah. So, but yes, it is still there, but not so much, it has toned down. The organizations have matured well beyond. Uh, frivolous negotiation, I would say. Yeah. On one side, there is this smart honcho managing everything by simply making a phone call, as you mentioned. Hmm. A mix of both is desirable. Sometimes you need honcho who can make things very fast for firefighting. But most of the time, you need diligent people who follow the rules and who do things systematically through the system. Because end of the day, you do not want to firefight forever. Firefighting has to be few and far between instances. The system has to be in place, the due diligence has to be the order of the day and all the rules have to be followed, all the systems must be followed as far as possible. Crisis situations. Yes, if there is a fire fighting, management has to first ask why the fire was there rather than just giving credit to somebody who does fire fighting. You have to analyze and you have to prevent the recurrence of such fire ever again. So, going further, yes, I hope management will become smart enough and they will discourage the instances of fire fighting 
and having to bypass everything and like uh, coming out as a hero, as a savior in crisis. Now, that kind of heroism is not warranted in serious industry. Maybe okay for Bollywood, but not in serious industry.